happened to the choppers? I'm glad it's over. I never got the idea of make it lower, more dangerous without brakes. Uh, you have one from OCC, right? Oh, the biggest piece of junk. <laughs> Since its debut in 2002, Orange County Choppers, OCC, has captivated audiences with its iconic motorcycle designs and distinct features. However, a recent interview with Jay Leno has cast doubt on the brand's reputation, and he discloses reasons why investing in one may be a wrong decision. Paul Sr. is and says the same thing. He has a lot of his choppers on display. We're made to take no, the bike nice. No, they were made to go across the bar. <laughs> I mean, I was just stunned at how poorly, I mean, dangerous. I was so stunned uh -huh. at how bad it was built. In this video, we explore Leno's criticisms of OCC, along with several other supporting reviews and critiques. We also delve into Paul Tuttle's response to these allegations. Join us as we navigate through the controversy and uncover the real truth behind OCC's legacy. Let's dive in. But before we delve into the most recent revelation, we need to understand the context. Orange County Choppers. In the late 1990s, Paul Tuttle Sr. expanded his steel business, OC Ironworks, to include making custom motorcycles. He started Orange County Choppers, OCC, in 1999 in Montgomery, New York. Their first bike, True Blue, debuted in 1999 at the Daytona Biketoberfest. After their reality TV show premiered in September 2002 on the Discovery Channel, OCC built a new $12 million, 61,000 square foot facility in Newburgh in 2003. They owned it until 2011, but later had to give it to GE Commercial Finance to avoid foreclosure. In 2016, the property was sold to BRE East Mixed Asset Owner LLC. In late 2020, they decided to close the Newburgh location and build a new one in Pinellas Park, Florida, next to Burt's Barracuda Harley-Davidson. The new place, named OCC Roadhouse and Museum, opened in late June 2021. It includes a bike building shop, retail area, museum, restaurant, billiard hall, and concert pavilion. The Orange County Chopper Show is not only renowned for its ongoing conflicts, but is primarily celebrated for its exceptional bikes and craftsmanship. Airing on the Discovery Channel, the series primarily focused on the discord between Paul Sr. and Paul Jr. of Orange County Choppers. Their disputes frequently resulted in damaged property and equipment, as well as the use of explicit language. While this added a unique and captivating element to the show, such behavior would likely lead to dismissal in real-life scenarios, even for the most esteemed actors in Hollywood. However, for Orange County Chopper, these occurrences were integral to their success and the allure of the show. Presently, they position themselves as more than just a motorcycle manufacturer. Despite the evolution of Orange County Choppers beyond the show, Paul Sr. and his iconic mustache remain integral figures within the Orange County Chopper community. His son and several co-stars have ventured into their own custom bike business. The team introduced their inaugural official app in 1999. With the premiere of American Chopper on the Discovery Channel in 2002, they gained widespread attention from motorcycle enthusiasts worldwide. Over the ensuing decade until 2010, they consistently showcased their prowess in crafting bikes from scratch across six shows. A crucial aspect of their business was demonstrating their capability to produce unique motorcycles within tight deadlines. The family enterprise has thrived, even amidst their relocation in 2020, prompted by Paul Sr.'s retirement and relocation to sunny Florida. They now reside in St. Petersburg, situated on the western coast of the state, boasting a Harley-Davidson dealership and the adjacent Roadhouse Museum. The museum, unveiled in July 2021, features a bar, restaurant, and live music venue, epitomizing a haven for bikers. Despite the conclusion of the reality show over a decade ago, the business continues to flourish, receiving accolades for its diverse product range, particularly in clothing and accessories. Their diverse array of products includes collapsible dog bowls and poker chips, among other enticing items. In addition to broadening their array of services, Orange County Choppers now ventures into endorsements featuring appearances by Paul Sr. in advertisements, coupled with the implementation of effective marketing strategies. Noteworthy former clients encompass the Hard Rock Cafe, Caterpillar, and avid American chopper enthusiasts. Within their new storefront, motorcycles featured on the show are prominently showcased alongside tank-tracked bicycles and NASA-commissioned pieces, all resonating with similar themes in homage to the Discovery Shuttle. 
The meticulous attention to detail that characterized their work in the early 2000s remains palpable as the company perseveres in crafting distinctive motorcycles. Even individuals who haven't followed the show acknowledge its iconic stature, given its significant influence on motorcycle culture. With a show this successful, one could only wonder why a renowned figure like Jay Leno had something negative to say about it. Well, keep watching to know. The Impact of the Show The enthralling drama and conflicts at Orange County Choppers captivated audiences, with the interactions among Mikey Tootle, Rick Petko, Vinnie DiMartino, Paul Tootle Sr., and Paul Tootle Jr., driving the show's success to new heights. Beyond biker clubs, the series attracted enthusiasts of all stripes. When American Chopper debuted in 2002, it exceeded all expectations, becoming a massive sensation. At the beginning, homemade motorcycle construction was relatively unknown, but American Chopper transformed perceptions by revealing it as a multifaceted endeavor combining creativity, technical expertise, and artistry. The show left an indelible mark, inspiring a new wave of enthusiasts and craftsmen with its intricate designs, innovative techniques, and unparalleled creativity. This newfound enthusiasm rippled through custom chopper shops, drawing larger crowds to motorcycle events and gatherings. Beyond the motorcycle industry, American Chopper left its imprint on the broader design and automotive sectors. The skills and ingenuity showcased in crafting custom bikes influenced various domains of design and craftsmanship. The narrative of the show resonated globally, offering insights into skill and design while delving into the intricacies of a family business. It depicted their aspirations, challenges, and internal conflicts, adding emotional depth to the age-old clash between tradition and innovation. American Chopper transcended mere entertainment to become a cultural touchstone within the motorcycle community, leaving an indelible mark on popular culture. It offered a captivating glimpse into the meticulous craftsmanship, unwavering dedication, and intricate narratives underlying each handmade chopper. By intertwining family dynamics with the complexities of motorcycle fabrication, the show provided an insider's perspective into the inner workings of a family-operated enterprise. Spanning seven remarkable years from 2003 to 2010, American Chopper aired on the Discovery Channel, immersing viewers in the world of Orange County Choppers. Led by patriarch Paul Sr., the Tootle family navigated disputes and challenges with a hands-on approach, captivating audiences with their authenticity and expertise. Yet beyond the Tootle family, the show showcased a diverse cast of employees who swiftly garnered fan support. It also boasted captivating narratives and awe-inspiring choppers, firmly establishing the Toytool family's name in American entertainment and craftsmanship. However, the show transcended mere motorcycles, offering a glimpse into the dynamics of the Toytool clan and their relationship with their creations. As the cameras rolled, viewers witnessed both the highs and lows, particularly the intense conflicts between Paul Toytool Sr. and his sons, Paul Jr. and Mikey. These poignant narratives became emblematic of the show, often overshadowing the bikes themselves. Yet it was this authentic portrayal of unfiltered emotions that distinguished American Chopper from its reality TV counterparts at the time. The success of the show can be attributed to its cast members, and since the end of the show, news of their recent involvements have been scarce. Now, let's look at some of the casts and their post-show endeavors. Paul Tootle Sr., Lawsuits and Current Whereabouts. Paul Tootle Sr., the central figure of Orange County Choppers and its driving force, took charge after the American Chopper series ended. He aimed to keep the show's spirit alive by setting up a new workshop with a new team. Despite Tootle's vast experience, this venture faced its challenges. As the owner of Orange County Choppers, he remained dedicated to keeping the business running. He brought together a new group of motorcycle enthusiasts who shared his passion for creating outstanding bikes. Consequently, American Choppers made a return to television screens in 2018 amidst a wave of reboots. Fresh seasons under the moniker American Choppers were produced, promising exciting content for viewers. However, this revival faced legal hurdles that embroiled Paul Tootle Sr. in lawsuits spanning from 2017 to the end of 2020. Paul made a pivotal decision to relocate Orange County Choppers from New York to the sun-drenched state of Florida, 
aiming to explore new opportunities in the motorcycle industry. Additionally, he harbored aspirations of launching a new reality TV series titled Orange County Choppers Made in America. Regrettably, his plans encountered numerous obstacles, primarily of a financial nature. Despite securing investment from Thomas Derbyshire, Paul Sr. faced setbacks when the allocated funds for the show were diverted towards personal expenses, such as fishing trips, rather than its production. This mismanagement led to delays in the show's development, exacerbating Derbyshire's frustration and disappointment. Consequently, Derbyshire initiated legal proceedings against Paul Sr. in April 2017, primarily alleging misappropriation of invested funds. The dispute intensified when Paul Sr. attempted to alter the agreed-upon ownership terms, seeking an equal 50-50 split instead of the original arrangement. Ultimately, Tuttle lost the lawsuit, resulting in the shelving of the proposed new show. In a bid to bolster his finances, Paul Sr. opted to sell his lavish New York residence. Initially listed at $2.9 million, the property, a sprawling 39-acre estate in Montgomery, New York, underwent successive price reductions due to the urgency of the sale. By 2019, it was on the market for $1.6 million. Presently, Paul Sr. is collaborating with Keith Overton, a motorcycle enthusiast and travel business owner, to revive the Orange County Chopper brand. Despite the brand's setbacks and failures, this partnership holds promise for charting a new course forward. Paul Tootle Sr.'s conviction. The shocking conviction of Paul Tootle Sr. sent ripples across the globe. In court, spectators witnessed the once-renowned figure known for crafting remarkable motorcycles standing in an orange jumpsuit. His fall from grace commenced with a thrilling chase on one of his custom motorcycles, resulting in a revelation that exceeded everyone's expectations. While the prosecution accused him of a significant theft during the trial, there were hints of a potentially deeper involvement. The circumstances surrounding his arrest sparked confusion questions like, was he truly culpable, or was he merely caught in an unfortunate situation? As the judge rendered the verdict and Teutel was escorted away, speculation ran rampant. With the hearing conducted behind closed doors, the truth remained elusive, fueling gossip and rumors. Could he have inadvertently stumbled upon highly classified government information? The answers lie just beyond the horizon. Vincent DiMartino Vincent DiMartino, known as Vinny, became associated with Orange County Choppers through his connection with Junior during high school. While Junior and Vinny occasionally encountered conflicts on the show, Vinny's presence significantly contributed to its appeal, solidifying his importance as a key cast member. Joining Orange County Choppers in 2002, Vinny departed from the group in 2007 to pursue personal development. Opting to establish Five Force Customs independently, Vinny encountered initial challenges, particularly amid the 2008 financial crisis, which dampened demand for motorcycles and custom modifications. In response, Vinny diversified his services to include conventional car repairs, necessitating a revision of his business strategy for greater financial stability. After five years operating Five Force Customs, Vinny transitioned to DiMartino Motorsports. In the initial years of the television series, Vincent DiMartino gained recognition for his exceptional skills and diligent work ethic within the Tudel family's enterprise. However, Vinny opted to depart from Orange County Choppers in 2007, potentially influenced by discussions of internal team issues. Following his departure, Vinny partnered with fellow cast member Cody Connolly to establish Five Force Customs, a custom motorcycle shop that enjoyed success, but operated for a limited duration of five years. Following the conclusion of American Chopper, Vinny's interests underwent a shift from two-wheeled to four-wheeled machines. In 2013, he divested all his motorcycle equipment and invested the proceeds into founding DiMartino Motorsports in Wallkill, New York. Remarkably, Vinny's post-Orange County Choppers endeavors flourished, demonstrating his ability to thrive independently from the constraints of Paul Sr.'s management. Despite his tenure at the company, Vinny expressed a lack of upward mobility. Paul Tootle Jr. Paul Tootle Jr.'s journey as a metal craftsman commenced at the tender age of 12, where his innate talent for shaping metal became apparent.
Despite having a 20% ownership in the company they started together in 1999, he was fired by his father when he left Orange County Ironworks, but he didn't let it discourage him. Determined to forge his own path, he established his own shop in New York, entering into direct competition with his father's business. Over time, his ambitions soared, affording him the opportunity to showcase his artistic prowess without familial constraints. This newfound artistic freedom garnered widespread attention, facilitating collaborations with industry giants such as Blizzard Entertainment. Paul Jr.'s leadership abilities and unwavering work ethic have been central to his journey, evident in his projected net worth of $2 million, surpassing even that of his father's. It's evident that labeling Paul Jr. as merely successful within the Tootle family would be an understatement, particularly in light of Paul Sr.'s financial woes. As his portfolio continues to expand, he has ventured into historical writing, offering motorcycle enthusiasts a captivating journey through time, witnessing the evolution of the iconic bikes featured on the show. Mikey Tutul While other members of the Tutul family have carved out their own paths to success, providing fans with both a historical narrative and a tangible connection to the iconic bikes showcased on the show, Mikey Toitul, the youngest sibling, appears to have encountered less fortune. Mikey's role in maintaining family harmony, both on and off the screen, was pivotal. Initially tasked with menial duties such as cleaning and answering phones at Orange County Choppers, Mikey later collaborated with Vinny on the creation of the Mikey Vinny bike. Known for his amiable and affable demeanor, Mikey often played the role of mediator between senior and junior. However, in 2012, Mikey made the decision to depart from the show, seeking peace in his personal life and reconciliation with his father. Beyond his workshop duties, Mikey showcased his artistic flair, venturing into the art world and opening an art gallery to explore his creative side, featuring panoramic pieces among other works. Despite the show's end in 2014, Mikey remained steadfast in his pursuit of art. In 2016, he collaborated with fellow cast member Jason Pohl to launch a web series titled Wandering, aimed at raising awareness about homelessness in New York City. Regrettably, this endeavor led to legal complications for the Tootle family instead of achieving its intended purpose. In 2019, the Gunnell family filed a lawsuit against Mikey, alleging unauthorized use of Scott Gunn's work by his company and failure to pay the appropriate fees. Consequently, the court ruled in favor of Scott Gunn, awarding him over $200,000 in damages. Apart from legal troubles, Mikey grappled with alcoholism, exacerbating tensions with his father, and resulting in termination from all positions within the Tootle family business. However, Mikey took proactive steps to address his issues, seeking rehabilitation and ultimately reconciling with his family. Subsequently, he resumed his role as an assistant general manager at Orange County Choppers. Later, he ventured into the food industry by establishing Far Q LLC, primarily specializing in pasta sauces. Despite past legal challenges, Mikey appears to have achieved financial stability in recent years. Rick Petko Another notable figure within the company was Rick Petko, renowned for his expertise in blacksmithing and metalworking. His extensive background in bike construction and customization garnered him widespread recognition. Rick initially crossed paths with Paul Sr. during Daytona Bike Week in 2000, and their professional paths intersected again in 2002 when Rick relocated to New York. Joining OCC initially as a bicycle mechanic, he later transitioned to become a Southeastern dealer. Rick's prominent presence on the show solidified his status as an integral part of the Orange County Chopper family. Despite his deep affection for his family, Rick faced the challenge of commuting 90 minutes daily to be with them after work. Recognizing the need for change, he subsequently secured a position as the lead fabricator at Pocono Mountain Harley-Davidson in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Rick has amassed extensive experience in various fields related to furnaces and metal bending throughout his extensive career. During his leisure time, he indulges his passion for metalworking by handcrafting knives through his venture, RPD & Company. Renowned for their exceptional craftsmanship, his kitchen knives gained widespread acclaim. One of the perks of Rick's profession is the ability to operate his business from home, affording him more quality time with his family, Cody Connolly. 
Cody Connolly's introduction to the realm of Orange County Choppers and the renowned TV show American Chopper occurred at a tender age. His profound affinity for motorcycle craftsmanship became evident early on, underscoring his genuine passion for the craft. As a novice apprentice, Cody swiftly mastered the intricacies of motorcycle construction, showcasing remarkable skill in assembling customized bikes. Meticulous attention to detail defined his work ethic as he relentlessly pursued perfection in every project he undertook. His tenure at Orange County Choppers was characterized by continuous growth and evolution. Transitioning from a novice mechanic to a seasoned professional, Cody left an indelible mark on numerous iconic builds. Amidst the backdrop of dramatic reality television, Cody's departure from American Chopper occurred quietly, leaving fans speculating about the reasons behind his exit. Despite stepping out of the television spotlight, his unwavering passion for motorcycles remained unchanged. Teaming up with Vinnie DiMartino, Cody co-founded Five Force Customs, a collaboration rooted in mutual respect and a shared love for motorcycle craftsmanship. This partnership proved fruitful, as Five Force Customs swiftly gained recognition in the realm of bespoke motorcycle fabrication. Cody's precision and unwavering dedication were evident in every motorcycle produced by their workshop, reflecting their collective expertise and experience. Cody's journey extended beyond his involvement with Five Force Customs. He ventured into various sectors of the automotive and motorcycle industries, collaborating with fellow craftsmen engaged in custom motorcycle events. Despite maintaining a distance from mainstream reality television, Cody continued to hone his craft and make significant contributions to the industry. Consequently, his reputation in the business soared, eclipsing his association with the popular TV show. Rick and Cody were just two members of the Orange County Choppers family whose narratives resonated with people worldwide. Their experiences were integral to the show's impact, which transcended the realm of motorcycle building. Jay Leno's comments that set the internet ablaze. The era of chopper enthusiasm, once prevalent in the motorcycle community, appears to have faded. Jay Leno, in a YouTube video, expresses his relief that the trend has passed, citing safety hazards and discomfort associated with chopper bikes. He expresses disappointment with a chopper he acquired from OCC, highlighting construction flaws and safety issues. These were his exact words. I'm glad it's over. I never got the idea of making it slower, more dangerous without brakes, and uncomfortable. You know, I was so stunned at how bad it was built. I was riding it, and it stopped on me, and I realized the electrical system is fused through the rear tail light. So if the rear tail light breaks or blows out, the whole bike stops. I thought it was dangerous. It didn't stop. The geometry, the steering, I mean, they were meant to be. You build one for the fire department, it looks like a fire engine. You build one for the postal service, it looks like a mail carrier or something. But to ride, it's just horrible. I mean, I was just stunned at how poorly, I mean, dangerous the bike was. What are your thoughts on Lino's comments? Let us know in the comment section. Lino then proceeds to give a tour of his impressive motorcycle collection, featuring diverse models such as a Yamaha race bike, an MV Agusta, a Ducati, and a Triumph Bonneville. He also discusses unique aspects of the Kawasaki H2 and shares insights on the handling of the Indian Big Chief. The discussion then turns to the future of motorcycles, with Lino expressing enthusiasm for electric bikes. He commends the performance and smoothness of an electric bike he owns, underscoring the potential for electric vehicles in the industry. Furthermore, he explores the potential impact of synthetic fuels as a transformative force for the internal combustion engine. Wrapping up the video, Leno imparts valuable life advice to viewers, emphasizing the importance of pursuing one's passions and transforming them into successful careers. He stresses that when you love what you do, it never feels like work, encouraging young individuals to follow their interests. In essence, the video provides insights into the decline of the chopper trend, showcases Jay Leno's remarkable motorcycle collection, explores his thoughts on the future of motorcycles, and offers valuable life advice. The story of Sean that validates Jay Leno's claims and why investing in OCC may be a wrong decision. Their distinctive bikes often emerged from compromises between the team's conflicting design perspectives, leading to frequent arguments. 
However, following the conclusion of the show, the company underwent rapid expansion and garnered a substantial fan base. But the case of Sean tells us more. Sean, a personality from Bikes and Beards, long harbored a desire for an authentic Orange County chopper, which materialized during the third season of American Chopper. His aspiration came to fruition with the acquisition of a specific bike dubbed Corporal Punishment, custom-built for Army veteran Jeff CLE as part of the fantasy bike series aimed at the show's audience. Like many others, Sean nurtured a strong inclination towards owning a custom chopper, with a clear preference for a simplistic design from OCC. After a period of searching, he stumbled upon an opportunity to purchase one at a substantial discount, priced at a mere $14,000 compared to its original $80,000 asking price. Initially, his offer of $8,000 was rebuffed, but eventually, he became the legal owner after a few weeks of waiting. However, the ride quality ultimately proved to be disappointingly subpar. Despite Sean's history with poorly constructed motorcycles he had assembled himself, he asserts that this particular chopper surpasses them all in terms of inferior quality. As designed, the rear end of this chopper lacks any suspension system, depriving riders of the comfort of a cushioned seat. Essentially, the bike's rear suspension relies solely on the rider's spine for support. In essence, this bike lacks rear tire suspension, a feature absent in any bike produced worldwide. If this unique characteristic appeals to you, then this bike may be ideal. However, be prepared for potential discomfort and strain on your back. Moreover, the spikes adorning this bike present significant drawbacks. While they may enhance its visual appeal, they pose more hazards than benefits. Consider the scenario of a crash. The spikes, once seen as stylish, could potentially cause harm to individuals, including the rider. It doesn't seem like a prudent choice, does it? It appears that the buyer was more concerned with aesthetics than safety, which could explain Jeff Clegg's decision to sell. The rearward sloping seat makes it easy to fall off the bike, rendering the front brake ineffective. Conversely, the rear brake is overly aggressive, prone to sudden locking similar to that of an inverted belt sander. The exposed belt can cause damage to your clothing or anything else in close proximity. On the contrary, the substantial American V-twin engine is the redeeming feature of this chopper. Its sheer size is comparable to that of a basketball court. Sean ran dyno tests to measure its power, getting results from 70 to 110. But it turned out to be 65, surprising everyone. The bike's stability might be due to the 80-cubic-inch Harley-Davidson Evolution motor, which comes from the factory. Moving on to the braking system, the front brakes proved to be notably weak and unreliable during operation. Engaging them for rapid deceleration often results in the rear brakes locking up, causing a stylish yet perilous skid. Furthermore, the rearward sloping seat increases the risk of riders falling off the bike, potentially placing them in precarious situations where they must tightly grip the handlebars, essential for steering. Additionally, excessive vibration causes the mirror to shake excessively, obstructing the view through the rearview mirror. Despite some mechanical components, the battery frequently experiences premature depletion even after replacement. Ultimately, Sean contemplates committing a grave error by attempting to make the helicopter operational and perhaps enjoyable, a notion deemed ill-advised. Investing in an Orange County chopper demands careful consideration. While these bikes exude undeniable charm, factors such as practicality, maintenance costs, and personal compatibility should be thoroughly evaluated before committing to a purchase. Like any significant investment, it's essential to understand the long-term implications, assess your riding requirements, and contemplate the day-to-day -day functionality of the bike. While the allure of a distinctive design and the prestige of owning an Orange County chopper may be tempting, ensuring it aligns with your riding style, comfort, and financial capacity is paramount. For some enthusiasts, the thrill of owning such an iconic motorcycle may exceed practical considerations. However, others may find a more versatile and cost-effective option better suited to their needs. Ultimately, the decision hinges on finding a balance between passion and practicality. By carefully weighing these critical factors, riders can make an informed choice that resonates with their lifestyle preferences and long-term satisfaction, ensuring their motorcycle purchase evolves from a mere possession to a cherished companion on the open road. Paul Tuttle's response to Lino's comments. 
In an interview with Cycle Drag Universe, Paul Tutul responds to Jay Leno's criticism of Orange County choppers. Leno expressed disappointment in the quality and safety of a chopper he owned from OCC, leading to viral attention. Tutul defends the craftsmanship, citing the quality of parts used and the reliability of the bike's design. He suggests Lino's comments may stem from past rivalry with David Letterman, as OCC's appearances on Letterman garnered high ratings. Tutul acknowledges that choppers may not be everyone's preference, but emphasizes their enduring appeal. He dismisses claims of poor quality from Lino, asserting that OCC builds endure and contribute positively to the motorcycle industry. Tutul also reflects on the authenticity of OCC's TV show, highlighting its family dynamic and real-life experiences. Despite differing opinions, Tutul remains grateful for the support of fans and acknowledges the enduring impact of OCC's work. Looking ahead, he discusses upcoming projects, including his own YouTube show, demonstrating ongoing activity at Orange County Choppers. Paul Tutul also shared exciting updates on his upcoming projects and reflected on the vibrant activity at Orange County Choppers, OCC. Tutul revealed plans for his own show on Outlaw TV, titled Senior Living, which will not only focus on building bikes, but also delve into his current lifestyle, including his interests outside of motorcycle customization. Additionally, Tutul mentions his involvement in a two-part show for the Discovery Military Channel, where he will showcase his bike-building skills. He also hints at a future collaboration with Jay Leno, expressing his desire to bring the two legends together, possibly at a drag race event organized by Spider-Man Larry McBride. Tootle concludes the interview by expressing gratitude to the fans for their unwavering support over the years. He emphasizes the love for both fans and critics alike, highlighting the inclusive and appreciative attitude of OCC towards its audience, supporting cast of the show and where they are now. Regardless of American Chopper's enduring influence on popular culture, it's essential not to overlook the contributions of the supporting cast. With diverse personalities, each member brought a unique flavor to the show, shaping its narrative and characters. Let's take a moment to reintroduce ourselves to the supporting cast of American Chopper and their post-show endeavors. After Jason Pohl left as the narrator of American Chopper in 2007, Jim Pratt took over. At the same time, Pratt also voiced other TV shows like Airplane Repo, Out of the Wild, and the first two seasons of The Alaska Experiment. While some celebrities stay active on social media after their fame, Pratt seems to prefer a quieter life with less online presence. However, according to IMDb, he was a radio host on the network show Bob Hart's Abishola, which aired in 2019. While details about Pratt's post-American chopper endeavors may be scarce due to his preference for privacy, his continued work in television suggests contentment with his current pursuits. Ron Salisbury, renowned for his expertise in electrical systems, played a pivotal role in the Orange County chopper team, ensuring that each chopper not only exhibited artistic brilliance but also functioned flawlessly. Beyond his contributions to American Chopper, Salisbury diversified his interests by delving into automotive electronics. His exceptional proficiency has garnered him widespread recognition in the field, leading to numerous invitations to work on distinctive projects. Apart from his professional endeavors, Salisbury is an avid traveler, embarking on journeys around the globe. He captures moments from his travels through photographs, which he shares with his fans and followers on social media platforms. Mike Rowe has cultivated a remarkable career trajectory extending beyond television. Recognized as the host of Dirty Jobs and the voice of American Chopper, Rowe has continued to make significant strides in the entertainment industry following his departure from American Chopper in 2010. He has assumed hosting duties on several other prominent shows, including Deadliest Catch, Ghost Hunters, and Returning the Favor, spotlighting remarkable individuals engaged in altruistic endeavors within their communities. Rowe has been a staunch advocate for trade jobs, emphasizing the importance of skilled labor and the value of hard work. In addition to his television endeavors, Rowe has ventured into entrepreneurship, launching his own whiskey brand, Profoundly Disconnected, and a line of merchandise inspired by his appreciation for skilled trades. His efforts have garnered recognition, 
including the esteemed Eagle Scout Award from the Boy Scouts of America. Residing in San Francisco, Roe remains engaged in various projects, leaving a significant imprint on both the entertainment industry and the broader discourse surrounding skilled trades. His recent television show, The Story Behind the Story, is an extension of his identically titled podcast, offering viewers an insightful glimpse into narratives within the entertainment world. Jason Pohl and the American Chopper Reunion Specials. Jason Pohl, the esteemed architect behind the program, gained recognition for his distinctive style and occasional clashes with Paul Sr. Paul's trajectory as a designer skyrocketed after drawing inspiration from his tenure at Orange County Choppers. Jason's creativity extended beyond motorcycles as he delved into various design ventures, blending novel concepts with practical applications, rendering him highly sought after in the industry. In his personal life, Jason found joy in fatherhood, frequently sharing endearing snapshots of his children on social media. Transitioning from the limelight post-show, Jason maintained a lower online profile but broadened his scope to encompass industrial design beyond motorcycles. Although he made appearances on reality shows like American Chopper Sr. vs. Jr. and Orange County Choppers from 2012 to 2013, a notable incident on an episode of the former saw him handling feedback from Paul Sr. poorly, resulting in a heated outburst where he flung a motorcycle off a lift in frustration. Presently, Paul serves as a brand ambassador for SolidWorks, leveraging his experiences with the company's tools to explore further possibilities. Additionally, he operates his own venture, Jason Pohl Designs, undertaking projects such as CNC machine fabrication, a pivotal aspect of the production process. Balancing his time between work and family, including his wife and children, Jason's journey prior to joining Orange County Choppers took an unconventional route. Initially disinclined towards designing custom motorcycles, he pursued other aspirations, having served in the Marine Corps, an experience that instilled in him focus and ethical values that permeate his professional endeavors. Opting to hone his artistic prowess, he enrolled at the Illinois Art Institute, earning a bachelor's degree in fine arts. In 2004, Jason embarked on a remarkable journey that led him to Orange County Choppers, where he swiftly established himself as a valuable asset to the team. Despite receiving less screen time compared to some of his colleagues, Jason's diligent work ethic and exceptional design acumen did not go unnoticed. With his remarkable contributions, Jason amassed a net worth exceeding $500,000, a testament to his significant achievements. His popularity stemmed from his composed and focused approach to his craft, tackling challenges with resilience and maintaining composure even amidst demanding responsibilities. Initially intending to pursue a career in the U.S. Marine Corps, Jason's trajectory took a different turn, guiding him towards custom motorcycle construction, a domain where his unique skills and unwavering dedication thrived. While not as widely recognized, Jason's involvement in the American Chopper reunion specials came as a surprise, marking the return of both Paul Sr. and Paul Jr. to television approximately a decade after the original show concluded. Featured in a two-hour special on Discovery Go, the duo undertook the formidable challenge of constructing a helicopter for ABC Supply Company, a prominent American roofing and siding enterprise. Airing on February 24, 2020, the show depicted their race against time to complete the final helicopter for the former Orange County Choppers business within an eight-week time frame. Despite the strained relationship between father and son and their history of conflict, they were compelled to set aside their differences and collaborate once more on this project. Initially, Paul Sr. asserted his authority over the creative direction of the helicopter build, seemingly disregarding Paul Jr.'s potential contributions. Despite the challenges and uncertainties, Paul Jr. viewed this opportunity as a chance to mend their relationship, even amid potential setbacks. Given the immense success of the show, it was inevitable that networks would seek to prolong the narrative or capture its essence in innovative ways. Fans eagerly anticipated the reunion shows as they sought to catch up with the Tootle family's journey since the original series. These specials not only served as nostalgic trips down memory lane, but also provided insights into how the family relationships evolved over time and how the landscape of custom motorcycle building continually evolves. 
The expansion of the American Chopper universe through spin-offs and related programs aimed to capture the essence of the original while offering fresh perspectives to viewers. Some of these shows delve deeply into the technical aspects of bike construction, enriching fans with an understanding of the craft, while others explored the personal lives of cast members beyond the confines of Orange County Chopper's workshop. Though these endeavors garnered attention, they did not achieve the same level of fame as American Chopper. Legacy of the Show and its Crew Members As time marches forward, the legacy of the American Chopper crew endures. From the exhilarating days of crafting custom motorcycles to the present, where each member has pursued their own distinct path, their influence persists in the realm of custom motorcycle construction. Despite the show's conclusion, the journey for these legendary cast members continues. Some have embarked on new business ventures, while others have embraced personal passions, and a few remain immersed in the world of motorcycles. Whether it's Paul Tootle Sr.'s steadfast commitment to craftsmanship, Paul Tootle Jr.'s entrepreneurial endeavors, Mikey Tootle's artistic pursuits, or the pursuits of other key figures from the show, their narratives continue to unfold, serving as a source of inspiration for fans and enthusiasts worldwide. Though their paths may take different routes, the lasting impact of American Chopper persists, shaping the landscape of custom motorcycle culture. As enthusiasts, we are captivated by their ongoing journeys, eagerly awaiting the unfolding of new chapters in the lives of these iconic craftsmen. While the show may have reached its conclusion, the essence of innovation, creativity, and dedication instilled by the American Chopper team remains alive, inspiring individuals who embark on their own exhilarating adventures along life's highways. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it interesting. To know more about your favorite celebrities and shows, tap on the link that pops on your screen. See you there!